Okay, today we're going to learn the law of sines, or law of cosines, actually. But we need to know when can we use one or the other. And this one, whenever you are given two angles and a side. So you remember this from um, geometry. If you're given two angles and a side, so you got this triangle here. As long as you know two angles and a side that's not in between, so if I know this side right here and these two angles, that's angle, angle, side. And if I know this side here and these two angles, that's angle, side, angle. That's when you can use the law of sines. So what's different about the law of cosines? Well, the law of cosines has more sides than angles. See, this one has more angles than sides. So if there's more angles given to you, if you get two angles in one side, no matter where they are, use the law of sines. If you get two sides and one angle, then you have to use the law of cosines. Or, so two sides and one angle, so you could have something like this. There you go. Two sides, so you know this side, and you know this side, and you know the angle in between, right? That would be the law of cosines. Or, if you have three sides, you can also use the law of cosines. So if I know this side, and this side, and this side, I can use the law of cosines. So, those are the deals. If I know more angles than I do sides, use the law of sine. If I know more sides than I have angles, use the law of cosine. So what the heck is the law of cosines? Well, it's like the Pythagorean theorem. Remember the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared? But the Pythagorean theorem only works on right triangles. The law of cosines works on everything. So if you notice, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? And that's one of these down here. But whenever it's not a right triangle, you have to subtract 2 times a times b times the cosine of c. So look at what you got. If you're looking for side a, you have to know the other two sides and the angle in between those sides. Right? That's what it says. If you're looking for side B, you have to know the other two sides and the angle in between those two sides. So you have the angle that's opposite the side you're looking for. See, there's a C there, capital C here. Lowercase b there, capital B there. Right? So you can name your triangle any which way as long as you're looking for... Um, whichever side you're looking for and whatever angle you know, right? So you have to know two sides and one angle or all three sides. So, here we go. Let's do one. Where's my cover of all my answers here? So, a, a hiker walks three miles due east. So this is three. Three miles due east. Then he turns 45 degrees. So that's this angle right here. And he walks two miles northeast. Right? So this is 45 on the outside of this triangle, which makes this one 135. Remember, 180 minus 45 is 135. So the angle inside the triangle is 135. Now it ends up, we know these two sides of the triangle. This one's 3, this one's 2, the angle in between, that's side angle side. Yay! That means we can use the law of cosines, okay? So, I know then 
that I can get um, I can find side C which is what I want to know he's going to walk straight home I want to know how far does he have to walk and so I can find that out if I use the law of cosines so we're going to use the law of cosines that says I'm looking for side C I know A and I know B this one's 3 this one's 2 here we go so I put 2 squared plus 3 squared then I have to subtract according to what it says 2 times A times B times the cosine of the angle inside the triangle so if we work that out we get 4 plus 9 minus 12 times this nasty little decimal and lo and behold I know how long c squared is hey but I don't want to know c squared I want to know how long c is so I have to take the square root I have to take the square root of that number and the square root of that number is 4.6 so we walk 3 miles this way 2 miles that way and he's going to end up walking 4.6 miles home, right? That's the deal. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay, so if I have a triangle like this, they tell me angle B is given to me, right? Angle B is given to me. I want to know what side B is then, right? So side B is this. I have to have 14 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 14 times 20, right? <laughs> I'm putting a, a doing it where you can't see it. There we go. 14 squared times 20 squared, 2 times 14 times 20, times the cosine of 38. Yay! Right? If we multiply, if we add these things together, multiply them all out, then take the square root, B is going to equal the square root of whatever we get when we multiply all those things out. Right? So let's do it. Do it to it. So, 14 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 14 times 20 times the cosine of 38 degrees. How about that? I get 103.7.286. Take the square root of that number, huh? What is that? Oops. Square root of that number. 32.2. 32.2. How about that? Well, let's see, is that right? Could that possibly be right? Did I subtract? Hmm, let's see. Oh, I did not. Look at me. I added right there. This is supposed to be subtraction. I knew I did something wrong whenever I got such a big angle. 154. Square root of 154. That's the right answer. There we go. 12.43. 12.4. Yay! That's all we're doing whenever we solve this. So it doesn't matter which angle they give you. You know, it doesn't make any difference. If they give you angle A, then you're looking for side A, right? I would know that um, this one, A squared would equal the two sides I've given. So that's B squared plus C squared minus 2 times uh, 12 times 17 oh what happened to my paper <laughs> times the cosine of 60 
no problemo. And then a would equal the square root of whatever number I get. Don't forget the minus. I did plus on that one. That doesn't work. So what about the other one? What if it gives you side, side, side? So let's do one that gives you side, side, side. So here, we need to find one of the angles. In fact, we're supposed to find all of the angles. Once we know one of the angles, then it's easy to find all the rest of them. So let's do, let's do A. Right? So I know A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times A B cosine of, I mean B C cosine of A. So we're looking for a cosine of A, right? That's the thing we don't know. We know everything else. So check it out. I've got a 4 here. 4 squared equals, and then I've got a 6 here, and a 3 there, and a 2 times 6 times 3, and cosine of A. Alright? So I've got to figure all this out. Subtract, subtract, divide, and then I need to use the cosine inverse once I know what the little decimal is over there. So let's look at it, okay? Here we go. We know that this is 16. And let's do um, 6 squared plus 9. So this is 36 plus 9. So I got 16 equals 45. Right? 16 equals 45 minus 2 times 3 times 6, that's 18 times 6, that's 36 cosine of A, right? Minus 36 cosine of A. So, I have to subtract 45 from both sides. 16, 16 minus 45. Then I have to divide by 36, and I get 0, 8, 6. 0, 8, what? Did I do that? 806. Oh, I put the 0, yeah, 0 0.806. Right. That equals the cosine of A. So I'm going to use the cosine inverse, and I'll do that right now. Cosine inverse. Cosine inverse of 0 0.806. Kabing! Look what I get! And then 36.3 degrees. Angle A, angle A is 36.3 degrees. Ching, ching, ching! We win! Yeah, we win again! Hooray, hooray! Hooray. All right. So, working with uh, law of cosines happens whenever you're using side angle side or side side side. And law of sines, that's the one where you have fractions on top of each other. That happens whenever you have angle angle side or angle side angle. I erased it. Here we go. Angle, side, angle. All right. See ya tomorrow. Bye.